For more tips and tricks, don't forget to hit that button and subscribe. Also, ring the bell so you can get notifications anytime I have new videos. Now we're gonna make the frame and the doors. Super simple stuff. I use some rough cut lumber that I had, but you don't have to do that. You can go right down to your store and purchase the cedar to match the cabinet, it's easy. The thing is, I knew this was gonna match my cedar because cypress and cedar are very similar in looks. So it took the stain the same way. Um, I had some pieces left over. I needed to use them. They worked out great for this cabinet and it saved me a few bucks. But like I said, you can go run down to your store and pick this up and it's an easy route. All you have to do is rip them and put them together. As you can see, this wood has a serious crown on it. So I cross cut them in the sizes that I needed and then I ripped them with a table saw. After that, I ran them through my planer to smooth them out and get them all perfect. And then I ran them through my joiner to make sure the edges were nice and clean. You can buy store-bought material and easily just do cross cuts with it and put it together. There's no sense in making this complicated. I laid down a piece of plywood so I can work off of it. I have a good straight edge. The total width of my door is 14 and 3 quarters of an inch each. So what I'm going to do is measure over from the side 14 and 3 quarters of an inch. Make a mark. Now I'll take both of my styles and what I mean by styles is the, the vertical boards that run on the side of my door. The rails will be horizontal. I'll take both of my styles and line them up with the flat edge of this. Now, I measure over from here to here and I'll know exactly what my centerpiece has to be, my rail. Now I'm going to cut all four of my rails the same length. I'll be right back. All right, everything looks good, but right here I have a knot that's close to the end. I don't want this to eventually break off with stress. So I'm going to fill this in. Starbon has different colors. This is a brown, and this is a medium viscosity. We're going to take, fill this in, and spray it. Then I can sand it and go on about my business. So I'll just take a little bit and fill down here in the crack. And you can build it up. Spray it, it's going to dry, that's going to strengthen it up. My bottom rail is a little bit bigger than my top two rails, where my glass goes. These are an inch and seven eighths, these are two and three eighths, inches wide. So, we're going to take and use my pocket hole jig. This thing is fantastic. You can buy cheaper ones, but you cannot buy one that works as well as Craig from what I've seen. I've used General Tool and some other ones, and they'll work. If you want to try something on a budget, you can get those. If you can, you want to run from the grain into the cross grain. So my grain runs like this, I want to run it like this. I don't want to run them from here into this because it won't bite as well it'll open up that grain sometimes i have to go the other way and it still works but you're going to glue it on top of that so this is just going to pull it tight this glue is going to bond and you're going to have a really strong frame i do not want my screws too close to this end because that's where we're going to route and we don't want to bite into that screw on this one i want to get that close to the middle right here because I do not want to route it here or here and catch a screw I need both sides open they have a little mark right there where you can line it up Put a good bit of glue, let it come out when you squeeze it, and you can always wipe it down. As soon as we're done with this, I will wipe it down with a little damp cloth. Get the excess glue out. 
coarse thread, inch and a quarter screw. There you go. That's it. 21 and 5 eighths. That's the top of the style. 21 and 5 eighths. It comes in handy when you're doing this if you have a piece of plywood that's nice and firm or straight and it helps you to clamp things down and get them really tight. Remember when I said I needed to put these pocket holes further back? That's because I'm going to route this. So I have my router bit right here. I put it at half the depth and then I'm going to run it through and then, and then uh, increase the depth. You don't want to go full depth the first time. Especially if you have a little bit of harder wood, you're going you're gonna to splinter it or you're going to burn your bit up. So you want to take this and just run it right around. Do not stop once you start with the router. You take your router, you put it in, and you go against the pull. If it pulls one way, you push it against that and you go around. We're going to get a nice clean edge right here. We'll drop it down to full depth and, and run a second pass. You see how I wanted to pull that way? What I'm doing is I pull against it. This is a trim router. It's real small, easy to handle. Now I went full depth. I can take a chisel and make my corner square. And then I'll get my measurement from here to here and from here to here. And I'm going to bring it back a sixteenth of an inch. I'll make it a sixteenth of an inch smaller so I can just drop it right down. And if I want, I can put a piece of trim over it or I can use some little clips, um, glazing points to put this in here. But it's going to hold tight. And I'll just chisel those little corners out. Be nice and square. And I'll go straight up against the side here, just like that. And the same right here, just like that. I took my level, put right across here. Let me get the light on so I can see. Now, I clamped it to where it's it, the height I want. I put a line right in the center, and I put some tape because I didn't want to put the line on my wood. So that's the center. I want to go right next to the center on this side and this side. We're going to take our door, set it to the height we want right here. I better put another clamp on there. Stupid me. So we'll take that second clamp and I'll go right on the inside of that line to hold that in place. I want to put cedar planks in my center panel. I had to buy a whole pack because uh, that's how they came. Six pieces in a pack, eight feet long. So I can make a, a bunch of cabinets if I want or use this for other things. This was $20 for six eight foot long boards. Now that's plenty enough to do what I'm doing. I'm only gonna need a little more than one plank to, to make this door. So uh, it's gonna come out really cool, I think, once you have this as a center panel. Five sixteenths of an inch thick. I saw some cool pine ones, but they were, uh, they were warped. Cedar's more stable, and this is gonna look like it matches the rest of my cabinet anyway. I'm cutting these about a sixteenth of an inch short so it gives a little room for movement. I'm going to staple them in or I'm going to nail them with my staple gun. But before I do that, I'll want to stain these because 
if they shrink, this tongue and groove will show a little bit. And what will happen is it will be the same color. If I leave it white underneath there and I don't stain that part, then when it shrinks, you'll see lines. You don't want to see that. So I'll put my flat edge on the line because this is tapered. And if I put it this way, then it's going to groove into this. So we will hit a little mark right here. And I'm going to go with the grain right here. That It cuts a lot easier with the grain. I'll go all the way down and I'll hit it a few times. If I were to try just to hammer it across the grain this way, I would be beating on it and denting the wood up. So if you go with the grain, it chisels a lot easier. Don't worry, it won't stay in your fingers. You just rinse it off. I'll do a quick wipe on it. That's it. Flip them over and hit this side. Dowels are very cheap. I'm going to use this to put in the hole and then I'll cut them. And they'll be close enough to the color once I spray it. You'll see that it's, it's filled, but it's the back of the cabinet. I'm not going to go cut plugs that are cypress just to fill this. It's inside. My trim hammer's in my truck. I'm not going to go out and get it. All I need to do is tap this in here. So I'm going to take a small dab of glue. Because I don't want to have it all oozing over here. I'm going to spray it and I don't want that in there. This is what you call a Japanese saw. This saw can flex and flush cut so it's great for things like this. If you want to do it really fast, drop your CA glue in here instead of uh, wood glue. Spray this and tap it in place. Okay, it's been about 30 minutes. Everything's dry. Ooh, you see that little spot there? I'll, uh, I need to get a little bit of spray. Put on a rag and wipe this. That'll change colors. This I want to be in the front. See a little bit more in that groove. That'll change. I think I'm going to go with this side anyway. Make this the back. See what it looks like. Oh yeah. I like that. So what I'm going to do is tack it in place. This is my Swanson Unitacker. It shoots six different fasteners. One of them being a nail. This is an 18 gauge nail. So I'm going to tack this in all the way around and it's going to hold the center in because it's going to be nailed there and there and these are tongue and groove. When you load the nails in the unitacker, it's not going to be in the center. It's going to be close to the end. So it tells you where to put it on the bottom side here. It tells you where to put the nails. They go on the right side. So when I'm shooting this, I want to make sure that the right side is over the groove and not the center where I want to go. And it easily nails this down. Now we are ready to put the glass in. Two pieces, it was $10, double strength, it's real thick. And uh, you can see it's going to look great. I have it grooved out in the back. All right, so I'm going to use glazing points. These are flat glazing points. Um, I'd rather have the ones that fork up a little bit so they're easier to push in. No big deal. I'll be able to push these in. Be very careful using a chisel because you could cut your finger. I just cut a little piece of cardboard that I can put here and I'll spray it, move it over and spray the other side. I'm going to do at least two coats. Uh, well, actually I'm going to put three, but I would recommend at least two coats on here and that's going to seal it really well. Um, 
Make sure to wear a mask because they're strong fumes. I'm outside in the garage with the doors open, but the fumes are really strong from this stuff. It dries in a few minutes. You can recoat this in five minutes. Well, this was an easy build. It didn't take me long to do, and it was very inexpensive. Wood right now is outrageous, but a cabinet like this is still inexpensive to make, relatively inexpensive if you were to buy everything from the store. Because you could use one by threes for the for the styles, and you could use one by twos for the rail. All you have to do is cut your cut your lengths. You won't have to rip them. Now you saw I used a staple gun to put this in. Of course, it shot nails, but that's inexpensive as well. So you don't need a lot of tools to make something like this. I used my planer and my joiner because this was rough cut wood that I had and I wanted to use it. But you don't even have to use a 12 inch planer like I did on this. Just get a six inch joiner planer and you could do the flats and the sides with that. And it's actually faster and easier to use than a 12 inch planer. I will see you guys on the next project. Don't forget to subscribe. If you don't mind, please hit like for me and drop a comment. I'd love to hear from you. If you guys have any types of projects that you're working on and you, you have an idea, let me know. I'd like to see some pictures of it. Please check out paulstoolbox.com if you want to have any types of discounts on products. You can Google me at Paul's Toolbox or Paul Ricaldi. I'll see you guys later.